Greetings, everyone. My name is Brady Witten, and I welcome you to online worship here at First United Methodist Church in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Today, we are celebrating All Saints Sunday. And All Saints Day is a day that we remember and we celebrate our spiritual ancestors, those who have lived and died and faithfully now entered their eternal rest. So today in worship, we will name the members of our congregation who have died since our last celebration of All Saints Day, and we'll also invite you to remember those who are close to your hearts and that you're you're thinking of and praying of this day. Uh, But it's also important to remember that this is a time of worship where we celebrate Christ's victory over sin and death. May God grant us grace that in pain we may find comfort, in sorrow, hope, and in death, resurrection. And now will you join me in our opening prayer for all saints. We bless your holy name, O God, for all your servants who, having finished their course, now rest from their labors. Give us grace to follow the example of their steadfastness and faithfulness to your honor and glory through Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. And now hear these names of those who have uh, gone to glory since our last celebration of All Saints. Marcel Allen. Noni Banks. Fred Belcher. Pearl Belcher. Robert Britt, Joyce Brubacher, Winnie Bird, June Chandler, John DeSell, Anne Dietzel, Sarah Downing, Sylvia Duke, Marilyn Edwards, Ginger Ingram, Martin Johnson, Leon McGraw, John Meredith, Betty Miller, Francis Pace, Missy Poche, Evans Roberts, Betsy Smith, Corinne Sanamon, Carolyn Steinmuller, Bill Stoner, Marshall Townsend, Beth Walker, Freddie Whitford, John Whitson, and Carolyn Wright. And each year, we invite uh, our members and participants in the life of our community to submit names that are featured on an All Saints banner. And you'll see that banner here in our worship space today. And I also, at this time, as we remember those folks, want to offer you, in a time of silence, the opportunity to name uh, your dearly departed, those who are near and dear to your heart. And now, with confidence in Jesus' victory over sin and death, let us join together in our opening hymn, For All the Saints. Thank you. 
Would you please join me for the prayer for illumination? Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as the scriptures are read and your word proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you say to us today. Amen. Today's reading is from 1 Corinthians. Listen, I will tell you a mystery. You will not all die, but we will all be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised imperishable and we will be changed. For this perishable body must put on the imperishability and this mortal body must put on immortality. When this perishable body puts on imperishability and this mortal body puts on immortality, then the saying that is written will be fulfilled. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Where, O death, is your victory? Where, O death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved, be steadfast, immovable, always excelling in the work of the Lord, because you know that in the Lord your labor is not in vain. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. So All Saints Day is a day of many emotions. Uh, We acknowledge our very real and human pain and grief uh, as we remember 30 saints of our church who have gone on to glory. And some of those names that we read may be your loved ones. Uh, We also remember others that we have known uh, uh, and loved, those who have died. And even if you don't have someone specific on your heart this All Saints Day, All Saints is also a day that we ponder the mystery of death itself a topic that makes really a lot of people very uncomfortable and that many people just avoid altogether. And as we wrestle with these thoughts, as we wrestle with these feelings, we also need to remember that we gather here to celebrate our faith in Jesus and his victory over sin and death, a faith that allows Paul to boldly proclaim, death has been swallowed up in victory. Where, O death, is your victory? Where, O death, is your sting? Uh, So in the spirit of this day and in the spirit of Paul's proclamation, I want to share two stories with you, uh, stories that I hope will give you hope and confidence in the face of death, and then I want to offer what I hope will be a word of encouragement about the upcoming election. So does that sound good? (laughs) Life, death, and elections. So it was January 17th, 2017, Uh, it was early in the morning and I was walking my daughter, Zoe, who was then 12, to the bus stop. Uh, I was maybe like about a block from the house when I felt a sudden tightening in my chest and I started to feel a little bit dizzy. Uh, Zoe tells me that in that moment I, I went from a full erect position and just fell face first into the blacktop. Uh, She immediately ran home to get my wife, Tasha, and uh, Tasha uh, called 911, came running out to to meet me or to find me there, and and, and she said when she got there that I wasn't breathing. And so she bent over me, she started kind of uh, stroking my back a little bit and saying my name, and and that's when I remember coming to. Uh, And when I came to, uh, I mean, the last thing I remembered was kind of feeling this sense of of dizziness. But when I came to, my face was smashed into the blacktop. My glasses had been broken. I tasted a little blood in my mouth. And I could uh, could tell that my jaw was not quite right. But what I remember most about that moment uh, was a voice that I heard. 
Now listen, it wasn't an audible voice. It wasn't outside of myself. It, and, and it was really my own voice. But what the words said to me uh, just, just struck me deep in my soul. And the words were this. Everything is going to be okay. And uh, when I heard those words, I mean, to, to, the very at, to every atom in my body, I felt this sense that everything was going to be okay. Not just this moment, uh, not just a moment where I was in pain and maybe a little afraid, but it was a sense that God was telling me that everything, uh, past, present, and future, was going to be okay. And with that overwhelming feeling of peace, I wept. I really did. I laid, I laid there and I wept. And I wasn't weeping because of my pain. I wasn't weeping because of any other reason than just this overwhelming feeling of peace and well-being. So funny part of the story, uh, uh, the uh, fire truck came shortly after that and then an ambulance pulled up. But when the paramedics uh, came and they were checking my pulse, I remember one of the paramedics telling me, sir, uh, we can't find your pulse. Uh, we found out a few days later that what had happened was I went into ventricular fibrillation. I was having a heart attack. Uh, they found out that I had massive blockages in my heart. I ended up needing uh, quintuple bypass surgery. But what the doctors believe happened is that when I fell and I hit my chest on the ground and by breaking my jaw, which I did, uh, that the impact of that and the adrenaline that came from the breaking of the bone restarted my heart. Now, some people have said to me, well, Brady, God obviously had uh, more plans for you. God wasn't finished with you yet. And people have said things like that to me. And I, I have, you know, I, I wonder, uh, did God save me that day? Um, and I got to tell you, part of me thinks yes. Part of me says, I don't know. But what I do know this, uh, I had no fear in that moment. And I knew beyond a doubt that God was with me. So that's one story. But you know, but, but that's not always the case, right? Not everybody survives. Not everybody wakes up from their brush with death. So I read a story this week about a missionary named Amy Carmichael. I don't know how many of you know her name. She was a Christian missionary in India for 55 years. Uh, she was known for her work rescuing women and young girls from prostitution. And in her book, The Gold Cord, she tells the story about a child named Lala. And I just want to read it to you. Her name was Lala. She was five years old, a child of great promise. She sickened suddenly with an illness which we knew from the first must be dangerous. We sent an urgent message to a medical evangelist. And he came at once, but he arrived an hour too late. But before he came, this is what we saw. It was in that chilly hour between night and morning. A lantern burned dimly in the room where La La lay. There was nothing in that darkened room to account for what we saw. The child was in pain, struggling for breath, turning to us for what we could not give. I left her with Mabel Wade and Panamel, and going to a side room, I cried out to our father to take her quickly. I was not more than a minute away, but when I returned, she was radiant. Her little lovely face was lighted with amazement and happiness. She was looking up and clapping her hands as, de as delighted children do. And when she saw me, she stretched out her arms, flung them around my neck as though saying goodbye. In a hurry to be gone, she then turned to the others and in the same eager way, holding out her arms uh, to someone to whom we could not see. She clapped her hands. Had only one of us seen this thing, we might have doubted but we all three saw it. There was no trace of pain in her face. She was never to taste of pain again, and we saw nothing in that dear child's face but unimaginable delight. We looked where she was looking, almost thinking that we would see what she saw. What must the fountain of joy be if the spray from the edge of the pool can be like that. What must the fountain of joy be if the spray from the edge of the pool can be like that? So Paul writes here in 1 Corinthians 15 that death 
has been swallowed up in victory. What exactly does he mean by that? He certainly doesn't mean we don't die, because we do. We will. You will. I will. What Paul means is that those who put their trust in Christ need not fear death. The sting of death has been taken away, not because of what we know about death, although that helps, uh, but because of who we know. Uh, We know the one who is the master of life and death itself, the one, one who overcame the grave, Jesus. And when we put our trust in him, our fear and the sting of death are taken away. So there's a powerful prayer in the Christian funeral service that uh, always touches my heart when it comes to that time in the service. It's called the prayer of commendation. And I always tell people, I think that the first three words tell us everything that we need to know. And the first three words of the prayer are this, into your hands, into your hands, O merciful Savior. And it's a prayer of trust where we trust our loved ones uh, into God's hands. Hear the words of this prayer. Into your hands, O merciful Savior, we commend your servant. Acknowledge we humbly beseech you a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming. Receive them into the arms of your mercy, into the blessed rest of everlasting peace, and into the glorious company of your saints of light. And I wonder today, if the, when you're thinking about your loved one, can you commend them into God's hands in that way? And I would also ask you, can you commend yourself, your own spirit, into God's hands? This prayer is really one of trust. Uh, and when we trust in Jesus, the sting of death is taken away. Again, not because of what we know, but because of who We know. So on Tuesday, uh, our nation is going to elect a new president. Uh, I'm aware that the consequences of this election could be significant. I'm aware that people feel passionately, very passionately, about who wins. I have my own thoughts about these things. But I want to ask you to think about something. Uh, We've just talked about the fact that Christians are people who put their trust in Jesus. Uh, We trust Jesus with life. We follow his teaching. We follow his example. We believe that his way is the way. Uh, We trust Jesus with death, believing that he has gone ahead to prepare a place for us in eternity. Well, if we can trust Jesus with this life, and if we can trust Jesus even in death, shouldn't we also be able to trust Jesus with an election? Now, I'm not saying that God is going to control the outcome here. Uh, God has a way of letting us choose our own way. But what I'm saying is that no matter who wins on Tuesday, Jesus is still my guy. No matter who wins on Tuesday, I will still trust Jesus with all my life. No matter who wins on Tuesday, I know who it is who will welcome me one day into my eternal home. No matter who we, the people, choose as the president of our nation, I will still choose Jesus as the Lord and the master of my life. And I hope you will, too. And if you do, I want to close with Paul's words. Be steadfast, immovable, always excelling in the work of the Lord, because you know that in the Lord your labor is not in vain. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sins, and who seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Beloved God, who was known to our mothers and fathers, and even to our spiritual forebears, have mercy on us. We do not always love as you would have us love. We do not always do as you would have us do. In our stubbornness, we turn from you when we should turn toward you. Hold us, dear one. 
Comfort us when we mourn the passing of friends and family and help us to know that they are rejoicing in your presence. We praise you for the grace you shower on us, constantly forgiving our errors, especially the ones we don't share with any but you. Hear now the silent fears and worries of our hearts. Through God's grace, we are forgiven. By the mercy of our Creator, through the love of the Christ and in the power of the Spirit, let us rejoice and be glad. Glory to God. Amen. So one of the most significant times I find in worship is a moment that we call the passing of the peace. And this is particularly important on communion Sundays when we have asked God for uh, forgiveness. And as part of that, we are called to extend uh, forgiveness and peace to one another. So I want to invite you at this time to share the peace of Christ with anyone who might be worshiping with you this morning at home uh, or wherever you may be. And also want to encourage you to extend those greetings to people via text message on social media, however you want to do that. May the peace of Christ be with you. So uh, I'm being told that I don't have a choice in this matter, and so I have to announce to you that the flowers this morning are given to the glory in God and in honor of my 50th birthday by my family. So uh, thank you, thank you for that. So I want to encourage you uh, to interact with us in a variety of ways, and one of those is just by letting us know that you're here. And so you'll see a link for what's called a connection card, and that's just a way that you can share your name and your email address with us and let us know you're worshiping. Uh, if you're worshiping with us for the first time, I really am glad that you've uh, come, up, come upon this time of worship, and I hope that you'll be blessed by it and that you'll encounter the presence of God in this time. Uh, but please let us know you're here. Take a moment, fill out that connection card. We just want to greet you and to say welcome. Uh, you'll also see opportunities to fill out different prayer requests. Uh, you can share joys or concerns with us, and it's our, our privilege to lift those before God in prayer. And I also want to invite you, if you're comfortable, to share your prayer request in the comments on whatever platform you're watching. And uh, in that way, the people who are worshiping with you this morning can also lift those concerns before God in prayer. And finally, I always want to encourage you uh, in the practice of generosity. Uh, generosity, I think, is one of the great spiritual practices. It's one that uh, we tend to, to uh, neglect sometimes, but it is the one that really helps us to align ourselves uh, most immediately with God's kingdom. And so I want to encourage you to consider First United Methodist Church in your practice of generosity, and you can do that in three ways. Uh, you can uh, give via uh, a link there that will give you a, a text giving option. You can go to our church's uh, uh, website, and you can set up a recurring gift or give a one-time gift there, or you can mail a check to the church, and you'll see the address on your screen. So speaking of generosity, this is usually the time of year when we would be emphasizing the practice of generosity and asking you all to consider making commitments to First United Methodist Church. Uh, this year, uh, for a variety of reasons, we've decided to do that a little differently, and we're going to put off that emphasis and put off asking you all to consider a commitment to First Methodist until the beginning of the year. Uh, but I, I still want to encourage you to continue to give to the church the way you have been. We rely on your gifts to do uh, ministry and to reach the world with the love of Christ. And so uh, while we're putting off that, uh, that conversation and that invitation to give, uh, I, I do want to encourage you and the church needs you to continue to give and to support our ministries as you have been doing uh, for, the, for the, the beginning of this year, this part of the year. So thank you for that and thank you for your generosity. And with those things said, will you join me in prayer? Lord God, the earth belongs to you and all its people. For the blessing of this life and the promise of life to come, we give you thanks and praise. Bless this offering and use us that all may know the wonder of your love. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
And at this time, I want to invite you to what we call spiritual communion, and we will go through the great thanksgiving and say many of the traditional prayers uh, for communion. But when we come to the time where we will receive the bread and the cup, we will all abstain and we'll pray uh, and invite Christ spiritually into our hearts. Will you join me in the great thanksgiving? The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Blessed are you, God of creation and all beginnings, God of Abraham and Sarah, God of Miriam and Moses, God of Joshua and Deborah, God of Ruth and David, God of the priests and the prophets, God of Mary and Joseph, God of apostles and martyrs, God of our mothers and fathers, God of our children to all generations. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup. He gave thanks to you. He gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of a new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and the blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. Renew our communion with all your saints, especially those whom we have remembered today. Since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, strengthen us to run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now will you join me in the prayer for spiritual communion? Let us pray. Lord Jesus, I believe you are spiritually present in the sacrament of Holy Communion. I love you above all things and hunger to be drawn nearer to you through your body which was broken for me. In this time of isolation, confusion, fear, loss, and loneliness, when your church cannot gather physically at your table, I long for your presence. I ask you now to come spiritually into my heart. I welcome and embrace you. I unite myself to you and to the church past, present, and future. Let nothing ever separate me from you or you from me. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you make yourself available to us. And Lord, having partaken in your spirit, 
we ask that you would fill, with, fill us, go with us into this day, touching all that we meet with your presence, with your love, and your grace through us. And it is in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. So we've spoken uh, several times today about uh, all saints, and we really do believe that uh, this journey of faith in following Jesus is lived out best as part of a community with, with other people and, and uh, others to encourage us, others to remind us, others sometimes to uh, you know, spur us along. Uh, we cannot be Christians in isolation. So if you're a Christian person and you're looking for a church family to be a part of, I want to invite you to consider making First United Methodist Church that church family. Or maybe you're just beginning this journey and Christ is just beginning to call upon your heart to follow him. If so, we would love to be a part of that journey. So we have something that we call Believe and Belong. Uh, it's a gathering. Uh, I, I participate uh, almost every time that I can. Uh, it's a wonderful conversation about what it means to believe in Jesus and what it means to belong to a community of faith. And you, if you want to become a member of First United Methodist Church, we ask that you attend a Believe and Belong. Uh, the upcoming dates are November the 29th and December the 1st. And uh, you'll see information on your screen and contact information for Karen Milioto. And Karen can answer any questions that you might have, or she can also uh, just sign you up and uh, to let us know that you're coming. And I do, I want to invite you, and I hope that you'll consider making First Methodist your church home. And now I want to invite you to join in our closing hymn, uh, Rejoice in God's Saints. I want to thank you for joining us in this time of worship this morning. I hope you were blessed by your experience and that you encountered the presence of God this day. Hear this blessing. Lord, help us to live as those who are prepared to die. And when our days here are accomplished, enable us to die as those who go forth to live, so that living or dying our life may be in you, and that nothing in life or in death, will ever separate us from your love in Christ Jesus our Lord. Go with the blessings of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.